I had a dream. How many times did you actually heard that phrase? I had a dream to design cars. Yep, real cars. Uh, I think I heard twice the persons that told me give up than the ones that said, she's dreaming <laughs> already. Uh, Besides that, you know, the fact that I love cars, I really, really, really love to prove people wrong. I kind of did, <laughs> a few times. Um, I was thinking, okay, I want to make a, my dream, you know, reality. I don't want to say again, I had a dream. I want to say, I had, I have, and I will dr live this dream. So, this is it. <laughs> I've been through all of them. I didn't put quite all, just the most important ones. Um, it was easy? Nope. <laughs> Not even for my parents. <laughs> uh, it's not easy to have automotive career in a man's world, but they push me to a limit that I can say without them, I will not be here today. Um, after the university, I was thinking, okay, <laughs> I have the bachelor in here, in Romania. What do I do now? I have no clue how to build a car. Okay, <laughs> what do I do next? And I had the, the pleasure and the luck and the opportunity to choose if I want to follow my career, which I did, and I flew to North America. Where else? For an automotive industry, you know, career. I did all this. Uh, in the meantime, I actually said, why not? And try the one that you see in the corner, Boeing. is for a reason that it's in a corner. Uh, I always thought that, you know, everything that flies has to do with rocket science not with uh, four wheels on, a, or some type of wheels on the street. Uh, I've been through Boeing, you know, for almost four years. It was nice, but uh, what I, you know, feel inside is that I need the drill that the car gives you. I put quite a few people in here on two wheels, uh, just to prove that I can do it, <laughs> and some of them they know. Uh, and. Uh, as soon as another opportunity for automotive industry came up, I um, jump on. That's my baby, the, the other one. <laughs> uh, I start being part of the core team of Tesla since 2010. Uh, from the beginning, beginning, uh, I think it was the blessing of my entire career and some moments that I will, you know, cherish for my entire life. Um, we are thinking, wow, they must be like the most brilliant people in the world doing that. Yep. But only 60. <laughs> Six, zero. This is how many people started designing this car. Uh, we didn't have the outside when I started. We had kind of like the idea where the wheels will be. And they said, um, you're really good to the interior and the plastics. You will take on the module. What are the modules? Well, uh, the modules are those, you know, beautiful, you know, pieces that actually made Model S, Model S. Uh, and like, in the interview process, I look at them and I said, are you guys kidding? <laughs> I thought that you guys want to make an electrical car. I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, it was not the case. Uh, you will not believe it, but they are a lot more mechanical parts in this car than electrical. Why? Because the batteries are from Panasonic. No, Tesla do not produce batteries. Uh, but why did I accept first the interview? Because of this guy. Actually, because of these two. I know a lot of you in here, they know that uh, Elon Musk is the brain of Tesla, which 
I really love him. <laughs> he did a lot of things for Tesla, but the thing is those two guys are actually the brain that kind of, you know, in one point, they said we have to do something to change the world's idea about electric cars. Each time that someone said electric cars, they are thinking about like golf car. And it's true, this is what it was up to them. Uh, those two and Elon kind of went beyond and said, no, we will prove them wrong. Trust me, I know that. Each time that we try to approach a supplier, they said, uh, can you spell that? T-E-S-L-A. Oh, it's a Toyota thing. No, <laughs> it's Tesla Motors. <laughs> uh, in, when we start the battery, and this is what you see in here, it's kind of like you know, the chassis powertrain, what Tesla represent before we had Model S. Uh, in, and this is the module that I was telling you about. Uh, 16 of those made Model S, Model S. And trust me, after driving a Ferrari, Model S is like 20 times better. And the people that actually own one or actually drive in one knows what I'm talking about. Um, the excitement, it's amazing, even from one light to another, and I'm not kidding. So when we started designing the battery, we didn't have quite a, an idea how the, you know, the car will look like, but we want to do something cool. Uh, we, you know, go, we went back and forth, so it was not easy. You know, everything that, you know, the press shows about Tesla, it shows just the end result. <laughs> we had like, months without, you know, breaks and which were fun. I know, I'm crazy. Three months without a Saturday and Sunday, so this girl is not <laughs> with everything. But after, you know, a few, almost a year, uh, we finally had a prototype. And we finally had a chassis, but we didn't have a seat. So we said, okay, how we will actually, you know, tested. So <laughs> we put a, you know, the battery on the chassis and we put a, you don't want to know what type of seat, something so someone could easily sit down. And that's a moment that I will never, ever forget. And uh, all those moments that the people, you know, are saying, oh, you will never end up, you know, really designing cars are wrong. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, a mom, which I am, a wife. I think we are really strong, and I believe it. If I end up in here, all of you can, and especially Romanians. I know that. Uh, but I was really tough, and I was really a tomboy, and all the Tesla knows it, including Elon Musk, but we don't get to that point <laughs> right now. And they made me a surprise after the battery was done, and uh, they engraved my initials in all the batteries around the world for Model S and Model X. So, so <laughs> that moment for me meant something. Every single one of you in here that received that <laughs> she's Romanian or he's Romanian are wrong. There are a lot of good and bright engineers in the US and in Canada, which I was. So I'm sure the 99% of you guys are the same. Uh, <laughs> when they showed me that thing, it was not easy. They said, uh, is something wrong with the battery? Can you fix it? Like here, right? There were seven, more than 7,000 parts in that room. I couldn't fix something. So when they showed me this, I cried for the first time. I said, Haha, you are a woman. <laughs> it's like, yeah, finally. Uh, in, uh, because I was doing so well for Model S, I designed the, the, the next challenge for Tesla, which was the Rev4. Toyota said, hmm, a bunch of crazy guys really succeeded but not quite, can, can you prove it? And uh, we prove it with RAV4. After that, Mercedes you know, said, oh, Toyota had them. 
how about we, you know, challenge them and make the B class. I did that too with um, an amazing team of engineers, which we sleep more in the office than at home. And my husband actually knows that. And I'm happy that I have him. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is what happened. Uh, after we released Model X, I said, uh, I think I want to do something for myself, something that I dream all my life and have my own design house. Of course, I had the same, you know, ideas and reaction from people. I don't think you're doing the right thing right now. And uh, I said, well, I think after cars, the one that I love the most, it proved you wrong. And I kind of did. <laughs> because I, right now, I'm a, an advisor for four different disrupting new startups. And I know that a lot of, a lot of you guys love the words disrupting. Um, <laughs> and I will go to something that I want to patent right now. Uh, what you see in here, it's an idea that I had during Tesla time. They end up not implementing it in there. Um, and it's about the windshield. You're thinking it's a windshield. It's actually a, a film that instead of being, you know, <laughs> saying some really nice words because of your sun visor, which was invented in 1931, by the way, I created this film that that this idea for automotive is not mine, but in automotive, never had the idea to actually implement it. And uh, you just touch your glass and everything becomes black. Uh, this black. <laughs> After you touch it again, it becomes clear, like you don't even know that it's here. Uh, it's not ready yet, but it's in the moment. Another, <laughs> with this one, someone told me, if you show this one to Elon, first we will get in trouble, or you will get fired. <laughs> I didn't get fired. Uh, he actually said, wow, you have my full attention, which doesn't happen too often. And that's after I show him that actually, how does it work? Um, another project that I have is this beauty. You think it's a car? You think, what the heck, it doesn't have just three wheels. It's not a car, it's a bike. It's a bike. For who? For the guys in Canada. They are four brilliant engineers. They came to me and said, we cannot pay you, but uh, we really, really need you. And I said, OK, let's make it happen. So we did it. It's now an obsession in Canada. Uh, you can bike, like I said, or you can drive it. It doesn't go more than 35 kilometers, but trust me, the girls. They love it. <laughs> this is how it looks, so you don't have pedals, you have just, you know, not the normal pedals, but the bike ones. And uh, I believe that it will be a, the, the next disrupting thing in Canada alone, not, not just Canada alone. Uh, it fits in bikes places. It, <laughs> yeah, it actually does. It's really spacious. The beauty is that each time that you open the door, everybody's like, oh, sh <clears throat> Oh, it's something else in the Airbus so because of the bed. Uh, everybody will say, what the heck is this? Well, I love this project more than Tesla. Why? Because I can put all that I learn, all the passion that I receive from here, from Romania, all the humanity, that it's in this country, and I'm helping the Red Cross and the company that in section in Detroit, and the border do, bleh, doctors without borders, to build drones to help people that actually need technology, not just want it. And I want to emphasize it: need, not want it. What you see in here, it's actually a real prototype that uh, Vio did. It's in Madagascar. He flew <laughs> just one way. It's a prototype. Uh, with vaccines, blood supply, and medical devices, so it will help a uh, straight village that you cannot get there just, in, just with the 
with food. Uh, it saved a lot of people. <laughs> right now, it's actually asking us to send it to Brazil, full of mosquitoes. No, I didn't make a mistake. Full of mosquitoes to fight with the bad mosquitoes that has the Zika virus. So, as you can see, innovation and passion and the guts to try and follow your dreams, it can become reality. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people from China, from Germany, from all the, you know, company that I, they want, you know, my services right now, they ask me, where do you think the next big disruptive thing will, you know, what country it will come out? <laughs> uh, and I said, in this moment, because Tesla did something else besides electrical cars, he actually opened the gates for all of us to dream big. Those three people that start Tesla dreamed big. Those 60 engineers that designed something that we never thought that it would up to end up in here, they dream big. It's up to us not to leave your dream go away. I know in here, and you know, not in here, but in Europe, it's a bit different from, from US and from Canada, North America, but I beg you, don't let your dream go away. As someone told me, you're, you're a woman, and a mom, and a wife, and an engineer that did this all. And to answer where the next big thing will come up from, from all the countries that I've been through, and all the people that I interact, I think if we change just a few things, and we start believing in yourself, and the people behind you, the people in front of you, and the colleague of work, we can be the next Silicon Valley. Thank you.